All right, Shalom. As always, I'm thankful and I'm grateful to be able to come out here once again to preach and to prophesy unto my people, being you so-called Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans. And according to the Holy Bible, you are the biblical Israelites. This is based off of your father's genetic line and which determines whether or not you are an Israelite. This is not a colorism thing. So I'm not out here to teach a so-called black or white doctrine, okay? Because mingling those two shades together, you get gray. And there are no gray areas when it comes to this ministry. Our people are hidden behind many faces because we've been scattered all throughout the earth, which is why I come out here in the open so everyone can see me because our people are everywhere. You just never know. We're hidden behind many faces, okay? And I also have to let these other nations know their future and their judgment on top of that. I'm out here a little earlier than usual. It's about, well, where I'm at, it's about 9.30. Yeah, my watch, I need to turn the brightness up on it. That's what I should have did before I got out here. Yeah, it's about 9.30 a.m. out here. So traffic, it should be picking up. You know, it's not as busy as what it would normally be when I get out here. All right? But before I get started, I have to give all thanks and praises unto our power, the power of Israel, not the power of any other nation, as much as people like to lie and say that the Heavenly Father and His only begotten Son just love everybody on earth. That's a lie. OK, but he's the power of Israel. And what is his name? Yahweh, Bahashem Yahweh Shai, Bahashem Wabrakakwadash. Peace, blessings and much respect to the elders and the apostles of Great Millstone on down to the rest of the elders who rule well within Israel. Salutations to the hopeful elect throughout the four corners of this whole entire earth, no matter where, whom they may be or what they may look like, pushing out this purified truth. To the rest of the church who believe as well, you men who may not be teachers or prophets, you women, sons and daughters also. The water to Yahweh Shai, because without him enduring and going to that cross, for the nation of Israel and the nation of Israel alone, none of this would even be possible whatsoever. This is the book of Acts chapter 17 and verse 24. The power that made the world and all things therein Seeing that he is Lord of heaven and earth, dwelleth not in temples made with hands. It's funny how people will pass us up, but then give reverence to some false pastor in a so-called church building. Not even understanding that the Heavenly Father doesn't even dwell with temples made with hands. Are not these church buildings made by the hands of man? And then not only made by the hands of man, made by the hands of adulterers, idolaters, okay, sorcerers, and all the above. So these harlot houses, they're not holy, they're not righteous, they're not teaching you the truth, okay? The Lord does not dwell in temples made with hands. So let's read it again in Acts 17 and 24. The power that made the world and all things therein, seeing that he is Lord of heaven and earth, dwelleth not in temples, made with hands so seeing that he doesn't dwell in temples made with hands what does that mean where does he dwell let's read 2nd Corinthians chapter 5 and 1 for we know that if our earthly house of this tabernacle were dissolved speaking of our bodies we have a building of the power a house not made with hands eternal in the heavens so right now we have an earthly body and then eventually we're going to be given a spiritual body. But in both of our bodies, the heavenly father through his only begotten son is dwelling within us because we are a temple, but we're not a temple made with hands. We are a temple made by Yahweh Wai Yahweh Shai and they're dwelling within us. But again, people will skip us and they'll go directly to a so-called church building as if they have the answers and the answers are right here in front of you 
For we know that if our earthly house of this tabernacle were dissolved, we have a building of God, a house not made with hands, eternal in the heavens. So the Lord dwells within us. And right now he's dwelling within us while we're in our earthly state. And he's also going to dwell within us once we get our new bodies, which is a spiritual house. Okay. Because he's not going to dwell within temples made with hands, but rather he's within us. Okay. Let's go to first Kings chapter eight and verse 27. But will God indeed dwell on the earth? Behold, the heaven and heaven of heavens cannot contain thee, how much less this house that I have built it. So a physical house cannot contain the Lord. The heaven of heavens can't even contain the Lord. And the only reason why the Lord dwells within us, that shows you how much he's humbling himself to even dwell within such vessels as we are. He calls us worms in the Bible. But yet the heavens of heaven can't even contain the Lord. Okay, that's how much he loves us. So the Lord isn't dealing with these so-called church buildings, but rather he's dealing with the real church, which are you men and you women, you sons and daughters out there who believe in Yahweh and Yahweh Shai through faith. Because this is about faith. We're not going to be saved by our works, but if you believe you're going to do something you're going to show some type of effort to show you how was shy. I believe that's why I showed action and not just lip service. But will the power indeed dwell on earth? Behold, the heaven and heaven of heavens cannot contain thee. How much less this house that I have built. It. So guess what? As much as people think the heavenly father is dwelling within these churches, he's not there. All right. But he's with the men that you people drive past all the time because you people do not believe in the heavenly father. You're all talk. Let's go to Hebrews chapter two and verse 10. For it became him for whom are all things and by whom are all things in bringing many sons unto glory to make the captain of their salvation perfect through sufferings and who was the captain of our salvation Yahweh shy of course and the sufferings that we go through ultimately is to make us perfect he himself had to go through the sufferings and he's the king of kings lord of lords verse 11 for both he that sanctifieth and they who are sanctified are all of one so those of us who are sanctified are all one and how are we sanctified let's hold this Let's go to the book of Ephesians chapter 5 and verse 26. That he might sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of water by the word. So those who are sanctified are sanctified through this word. All right. So Hebrews chapter 2 and verse 11. For both he that sanctifieth, which is going to be through this word, and they who are sanctified are all of one. So we're all one body. So be that we speak the same word, the, the same doctrine. For which cause he is not ashamed to call them brethren. The brethren are the men who are like minded. Those who are speaking this doctrine. There's not a whole bunch of truths out there. There's one doctrine that Yahweh Shai has given us. Verse 12 saying, I will declare thy name unto my brethren. In the midst of the church will I sing praise unto thee. So amongst the sanctified men, amongst the gathering of sanctified men who are sanctified by the word, that is, that makes up the church. Because where two or more are gathered in the names Yahweh and Yahweh Shai, guess what? The Lord is in the midst. That's church right there. Okay? Anytime there's two people, even if a person comes up and they may not be a believer, but you're teaching them, the fact is... The Lord is using you to sup with them. And if they be of the elect, okay, he's going to have their ears open to what you're saying and they're going to receive the word. But if not, that's because it's just not for them. We understand that too. So the church, 
We represent the church, us brothers. Let's go to John chapter 8. In verse 32, and ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. What does that mean? You know, because we'll quote this scripture, and brothers may not know what this really means. You know, certain brothers do, of course, but you always have those brothers who may not be certain because we're all learning. Me, I'm learning every day. You know, me coming out here is also to help me get better. It's also for me to be sharpened so I can be on point. When I come out here and water, I water myself also. So what does it mean that the truth shall set you free? What is the truth? What does that mean? The truth represents Yahweh Shai and free from what? Free from sin. So through Yahweh Shai, we're made free, free from sin. Okay? Not because we're sinless, but because through him, we're hoping to receive mercy so that we don't have to go through the punishment of wrath that is soon to come. And ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. They answered him, we be Abraham's seed, and we're never in bondage to any man. How sayest thou, ye shall be made free? So these wicked scribes and Pharisees, they were just being carnal. And guess what? If you are of a carnal mind, you are an enemy to the heavenly father. Yahweh Shai answered them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Whosoever committed sin is the servant of sin. So if you commit sin, if you're a willful sinner, then you are a servant to sin. But through our Lord and Savior, that's how you're made free. Okay? And the servant abideth not in the house forever, but the son abideth forever. If the son, therefore, shall make you free, Ye shall be free indeed. So through Yahweh Shai, that's how we're made free from sin. Because it's through him that our shortcomings are basically, um, what's a good word for it? Our shortcomings are basically going to be um, disannulled, I guess is a word, or void, void of judgment through Yahweh Shai, okay? So now what I want to do is go to the book of John chapter 14 and verse 6. Yahweh Shai saith unto him, I am the way, the truth. So Yahweh Shai is the truth. Remember, the truth shall set you free. So Yahweh Shai is what sets us free. It's Yahweh Shai that allows me to do what I'm doing. You know, as I'm growing in the spirit, you know, as I'm learning more and more each day, as I'm, you know, pondering on things, what I've come to conclude is really what Yahweh Shai asks of us is very simple. Be brotherly. Love your brother. Learn how to be a servant better than how to be a master. I think that's the secret that brothers aren't really picking up on. Okay? Brothers think, you know, being the top preacher, the top prophet, is what Yahweh Shai is looking for but rather how we treat one another, okay? Because any brother who's offended me, you might feel a certain way about me, okay? But at the end of the day, I still pray for you brothers. I still want to see you brothers win, okay? Because I don't want to be, you know, guilty when Yahweh Shah returns because of my emotions getting in the way. John 14 and 6, Yahweh Shah said unto him, I am the way, the truth, so remember, this truth shall set you free. Yahweh Shai is that truth that sets us free. I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. So Yahweh Shai is the way of truth. He's the way of life. And we cannot go to the Heavenly Father without going through Him. All right? So guess what? You're passing up the church every time you see my brethren. We're coming in the spirit of the Messiah. We're coming in the spirit of the Heavenly Father and the Messiah so that you people understand. All right? Let's go to Romans chapter 6. Romans chapter 6 and verse 18. Being then made free from sin through Yahweh Shai, ye become the servants of righteousness. So if you're free from one thing, 
you have to be a servant to another. So if you're free from sin, you're going to be a servant to righteousness or vice versa. Being then made free from sin, ye became the servants of righteousness. I speak after the manner of men because of the infirmity of your flesh. For as ye have yielded your members, servants to uncleanliness and to iniquity, unto iniquity, even so now yield your members, servants to righteousness, unto holiness. So we have to set aside various lusts. Okay, we have to do uh, what the Lord wants us to do, not follow after what our lust says or what our emotions say if it's not backed up with the scriptures. What fruit had ye then in those things whereof ye are now ashamed? For the end of those things is death. But now being made free from sin, because the truth shall make you free, being Yahweh shy, free from what? Free from sin. But now being made free from sin and become servants to God, ye have your fruit unto holiness and the end everlasting life. So you have to choose what side you're going to be on. You're either going to be a servant of righteousness or a servant of sin. But being a servant of one, you're free from the other. So coming into this ministry, you're free from sin. Being in the world, you're free from righteousness. Okay? You can't, you know, say you don't pick a side. You're going to automatically pick a side based off of your actions. Let's go to the book of Romans chapter 8 and verse 1. There is therefore no condemnation to them which are in Mashiach Yahweh Shai, who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. So you have to set aside those worldly lusts. That's how you're free from sin. For the law of the spirit of life in Mashiach Yahweh Shai hath made me free, because he's the truth that sets us free from the law of sin and death. So we understand that we're all sinners. But Yahweh Shai has given us a way to receive everlasting life. Because without Yahweh Shai being that perfect sacrifice, that perfect lamb without blemish, blemish, we wouldn't even have opportunity. I wouldn't even be out here doing this right now. Okay? Let's go to Wisdom of Solomon. Chapter 5 and verse 6. Therefore have we erred from the way of truth. And the way of truth is the way of Yahweh Shai because he is the truth. Allen Iverson is not the truth. Okay? Therefore have we erred from the way of truth. And the light of righteousness hath not shined unto us. And the sun of righteousness rose not upon us. And the sun of righteousness is symbolic for Yahweh Shai. Because ultimately he's the true son. Okay, he's that light. Okay, the sun itself, you could say to a degree, is based off of Yahweh Shai because he's the sun. He's the light. Okay, he's the true sun, the true light. Now, a lot of people, they're in error of the truth because they're in darkness. And a lot of our people are in darkness. Why? Because they've been deceived. They believe the lies that they've been told. They'll believe anything but us. You know, that's how crazy it is, man. These people will believe anything, but they won't believe us. Right? They'll question everything we say, but let somebody in the world tell them something silly. They're all for it. Therefore have we erred from the way of truth, and the light of righteousness hath not shined unto us, and the sun of righteousness rose not upon us. So why, are, why is our people in darkness? Verse 7, we wearied ourselves in the way of wickedness and destruction. Yea, we have gone through deserts. So if you don't have this truth, it's like going through deserts. And deserts, if you look at how they're set up, it's a very dry location. A desert is a very dry place. But when you come into the word, you receive this water. Okay, you're spiritually hydrated. We have gone through deserts where there lay no way. But as for the way of the Lord, we have not known it. Because the way of the Lord, you're going to be led to rivers of living water. 
But if you choose death and you want to err from that, it's going to be, you know, detrimental for you. And you're going to be likened unto someone who's in the desert, who's in a dry place. Okay? Let's go to 2 Corinthians. Chapter 4 and verse 3. But if our gospel be hid, it is hid to them that are lost. And a lot of y'all are lost in a spiritual desert. You're in a dry place. Here it is. We have the water, but you rather go to a broken cistern to receive your water. That's what a fool would do. Here it is. You're thirsty. And instead of going to actual water, you go to a broken cistern that does you no good. All right. So a lot of you Israelites, you're deceiving yourself. You're leading yourself to your own destruction. Okay? And you have yourself to blame. Because the Heavenly Father, Yahweh through His Son, Yahweh Shai, has been extremely fair to you Israelites. But if our gospel be hid, it is hid to them that are lost. Because a lot of our people, they're in darkness. They have erred from the way of truth and from the light. And whom the God of this world, and who is the God of this world? Esau Edom. He's the God of this world. All right? In whom the God of this world hath blinded the minds of them which believe not. He blinds our people through these uh, demonic churches. He blinds our people through the education. Okay? He blinds our people through the judicial system. He blinds our people through entertainment. Okay? In whom the God of this world hath blinded the minds of them which believe not, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Mashiach, who is the image of God, should shine unto them. So this gospel isn't shining unto most people. And here it is, we're out here in the open. But why is it that these people, they just can't receive it? Because the world is in a very dark place right now. Let's go to the book of 2 Ezra. 2nd Ezra chapter 14 In verse 20 Behold Lord I will go As thou hast commanded me And reprove the people Which are present But they that shall be born afterward Who shall admonish them Thus the world is set in darkness And they that dwell therein Are without light Or, or are without light So the world is set in darkness Darkness has, you know, pretty much spread throughout the whole entire earth. And that's why people uh, can't comprehend what I'm doing. Although I'm out here in the open, I'm not hiding. Okay? I'm not being discreet about this. I'm out here ready and willing to, you know, answer questions if people have questions. Ready and willing to stand up on what I believe if people want to try to remove me. Okay? But these people, they don't have the spirit of discernment on them. They have the spirit of darkness. Even if they can kind of perceive that there's something different about us, Esau has blinded the minds of them because the Lord has allowed Esau to do so. Behold, Lord, I will go as thou hast commanded me and reprove the people which are present. But they that shall be born afterward, who shall admonish them? Thus the world is set in darkness and they that dwell and they that dwell therein are without light. So let's go to Isaiah chapter 60 to precept that because we understand the world is in darkness. Isaiah chapter 60 and 1. Arise, shine, for thy light is come. And the light is, is come through the form of us men who come out here. Okay, let's hold this. I'll jump right back to it. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5 and verse 5. Ye are all the children of light and the children of the day. We are not of the night nor of darkness. So we are children of the light. So going back to Isaiah 60 and 1. Arise, shine, for thy light is come. The glory of the Lord is risen upon thee. So we're children of the light because we've been illuminated. We've been woken up from the dead. We've been risen up because this word is like a lamp to our feet. This word is lighting us up and we are a light of the world. Okay. I keep 
bouncing around. Give me a moment. I'm going to get back to the point. Matthews chapter 5 and 14. Ye are the light of the world. So we are the children of light. We're the light of the world. Okay? A city that is set on a hill cannot be hid. And that's why we're out here in the open. That's why you shouldn't be ashamed of this. You shouldn't be worried about what people think about you. We're supposed to be a light to the world. Okay? Let's go forward. Neither do men light a candle and put it under a bushel, but on a candlestick and give it light unto all that are in the house. Okay? So we're not hiding this light. We're out in the open. What's the point of having a light if it's in a disclosed location that nobody ever uses? You know what I mean? What's the point of leaving the light on in your house if you're leaving for, you know, a whole week, right? Somebody will say that's stupid, but you're saying, well, I'm leaving my light on, you know, so people know that somebody's in the house, although I'm not really there. It keeps my house from being broken in. Well, that would be wise, but take away that. What would be the point of someone having the light and the light is shining, but it's not being useful? Okay, you have a candle and let's say you hide it in a closet. For one, it's not illuminating the room. Two, now you're, you're hiring the chances of creating a house fire. Okay, we have this light, so our job is to shine this light in front of the world to see. Because we are a witness that Yahweh Shai is real. That Yahweh and Yahweh Shai is real. And that we are at the end of the world. Okay? Neither do men light a candle and put it under a bushel. But on a candlestick and it giveth light unto all that are in the house. And we're out here giving light to the house of Jacob. To the elect of the house of Jacob. Okay? So going back to Isaiah 60 and 1. Arise, shine, for thy light is come. And that's how we're illuminated. And seeing that we're illuminated, we're trying to pass the torch, so to speak, to you other believers. For you to be inspired and enlightened. And the glory of the Lord is risen upon thee. For behold, the darkness shall cover the earth and gross darkness the people. But the Lord shall arise upon thee. And his glory shall be seen upon thee. So here it is. Darkness has covered the whole earth. But seeing that we're the children of the light, the light is being shown upon us. There's a difference between us and these people and they know it. Okay, that's an example of us being a light to this world. And the Gentiles shall come to thy light and kings to the brightness of thy rising. Speaking of our people. Okay, let's go to the book of Ephesians, chapter 5 and verse 8. For ye were sometimes in darkness, so we ourselves, seeing that the world is covered in wickedness, right? The earth is polluted with darkness. We ourselves were just like these people. Some of us were scumbags. Although we might have had a difference about us to where we didn't take it too far, but we had it in us to be scumbags, okay? Because we were once in darkness ourselves, because we were as the Gentiles. For ye were sometimes darkness, but now are ye light. And the Lord walk as children of the light. So we are children of the light who have been called from darkness and seeing that we've been called from darkness, we have to actually carry ourselves in such a manner. Because this whole world, they're in darkness, man. And we don't want to be, you know, compared to these people. You shouldn't have people looking at you the same way they look at someone in the world. First Peter's chapter 2 and verse 9. But ye are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood. And this is speaking of all the 12 tribes. This isn't speaking of just Levi, okay? A holy nation, a peculiar people, that ye should show forth the praise of him who hath called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. So we've been called into this marvelous light because we ourselves 
were once in darkness. We are a light of the world through our Lord and Savior who is within us, who is the truth, the light, and the life. Okay? 2 Corinthians chapter 6 and verse 14. Be ye not unequally yoked together with unbelievers. For what fellowship hath righteousness with unrighteousness? And what communion hath light with darkness? So what fellowship does light have with darkness? You can't be halfway in, halfway out, man. You have to be about this ministry. You Israelites, you really have to understand the importance of how you live. The importance of what you believe in. These things do matter. You can't just do what you want to do and expect no consequences. Now, you can do what you want. That's totally fine. But there are repercussions to your actions when you go off. And seeing that the majority of you Israelites, you're in gross darkness. You got to understand that if you do not repent, the Lord is going to judge you. Okay? A lot of people might think I'm brand new who used to know me. People might think I'm stuck up or whatever because I have no fellowship with you people, man. Okay? If there's um, no signs of you showing interest in this ministry, I got to keep moving. All right? I don't have time for the distractions. I don't have time for adding negativity to my life, man. I don't have time for falling out with you because we're not on the same wavelength. Okay? Be ye not unequally yoked together with unbelievers. For what fellowship hath righteousness with unrighteousness? How do you claim to be in this truth, but you still kicking it with your adulterous cousin? You still kicking it with your gang-banging brother? You're justifying your dad being an adulterer. Right? What fellowship does a believer have with the non-believer? For what fellowship hath righteousness with unrighteousness? And what communion hath light with darkness? Amos chapter 3. In verse 2, you only have I known of all the families of the earth. Therefore, I will punish you for all your iniquities because our people are rebellious, very stubborn. All right. But here's the point. Can two walk together except they be agreed? So if we're not on the same path. We're not going very far. OK, and how I operate. I'm very serious about this ministry. OK, we're not going very far. If I feel like you don't have any signs of showing any interest in this gospel, in this ministry. I gotta go my separate ways. I don't need the company. I would rather be alone, okay, talking to a wall than to be surrounded by a thousand non-believers. And I'm not even joking, okay? A lot of you people, you might think you know, you know me or you know of me here and think that because of how standoffish I am that I'm stuck up and arrogant. No, I'm just not equally yoke with you people man because you people aren't right and i'm not trying to have your chaos in my life because you people are chaotic you're out of order okay can two walk together except they be agreed and that's a simple question with the simple answer the answer is no will a lion roar in the forest when he hath no prey will a young lion cry out of his den if he had taken nothing, can a bird fall in a snare upon the earth where no gin is for him? Shall one take up a snare from the earth and have taken nothing at all? Shall a trumpet be blown in the city and the people not be afraid? Shall there be evil in the city and the Lord hath not done it? So let's make this make sense. So what would be the point of you kicking it with the unbeliever? You being buddy buddy with them. Because you yourself ain't right. You yourself, you're not locked in the spirit. That's why. Okay? There's no justifying being with these non-believers. Sirach chapter 33. Also known as the book of Ecclesiasticus. Chapter 33 and verse 13. As the clay is in the potter's hand, to fashion it as his pleasure. So man is in the hand of him that made him 
to render to him as like of him. Good is set against evil and life against death. So is the godly against the sinner and the sinner against the godly. So one is set against another. So what fellowship in reality does light have with darkness? There is no fellowship, okay? Unless you're a perpetrator and you're not really about this ministry, okay? People in the world, they're better at separating from their enemies than some of you men in the truth who claim to be of Yahweh Shai and then try to use excuses that he was amongst publicans and sinners as if he was amongst these people to kick it and be a nigga. He was amongst these people to get them to receive this word. He was on a mission. He wasn't among them being a niggard. But you Israelites, you'll be amongst these people in the world and you show your true colors. You show that you haven't really changed whatsoever. Okay? Some of you men, let's say you was with a brother in the truth and you came across an old so-called friend in the world. Some of you men will mess around and leave the brother in the truth that you was with to go kick it because you were enticed by your old so-called friend in the world. Why? Because a lot of you, you're not really in this. You still have fellowship with darkness. Halfway in, halfway out, Israelites are going to be cut asunder because you can't make up your mind. You're double-minded. You're on this side, you're on that side. So if the Lord just cuts you in half, you know, both of your sides can go on their ends, okay? Good is set against evil and life against death. So is the godly against the sinner and the sinner against the godly. So light and darkness don't mix. That's like water and oil. You take some water and oil, you can stir it up. You can use a blender. You can do whatever you want. It is not going to mix together. Light and darkness, they don't mix. OK, you can't say, oh, well, it's light dark. That's like someone saying it's I'm, I'm light black. Right. Showing you that we're not so-called black. Should I say I'm light black? That doesn't make sense. Light and darkness. Totally opposite, totally contrary. Let's stay in the book of Ecclesiastic It's also known as Sirach chapter 17 and verse 26. Turn again to the Most High and turn away from iniquity, for he will lead thee out of darkness. Because if you're in darkness, that means you're, you're doing all sorts of iniquity. You're not trying to perform the works of righteousness. You're just being rebellious. You don't really have any moral value. You think you know the Most High if you say you do, but you don't really do what he asks or you don't believe in him at all. Turn again to the Most High and turn away from iniquity for he will lead thee out of darkness into the light of health and hate thou abomination vehem vehemently okay so you got to come out of darkness you have to completely hate your wickedness man you have to completely have the mind of repentance completely have the mind that what you were once doing i no longer want to do that i changed my mind that's really what repentance is, is you changing your mind, okay? Sirach, a.k.a. Ecclesiasticus, chapter 48, and I'm going to jump down to verse 12. Elias, it was, who was covered with a whirlwind. And this shows you alone that the Apocrypha is part of the Holy Bible. Because you can find this account in the Old Testament. Okay? Elias it was who was covered with a whirlwind. And Elisha was filled with his spirit. Whilst he lived, he was not moved with the presence of any prince. Neither could any bring him into subjection. No word could overcome him. After his death, his body prophesied. He did wonder... He did wonders in his life and at his death were his works marvelous. For all this, the people repented not, neither departed from their sins 
till they were spoiled and carried out of their land and were scattered through all the earth. Yet there remained a small people and a ruler in the house of David. So you either please the most high or you're going to multiply your sins. What's it going to be? Now we understand most of our people, they're going to multiply their sins. Let's go to Joshua. Chapter 24 and verse 15. And if it seem evil unto you to serve the Lord, choose you this day whom ye will serve, whether the gods of your fathers served that were on the other side of the flood or the gods of the Amorites in whose land ye dwell. But as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. So me, my house, uh, we serve the Lord. Me and my house, we serve Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai. Okay? Me and my house, you know, to the best of our ability, you know, well, I should say to the best of their ability, they're under my vibration. Okay? They're kind of under, you know, what I, what I do. All right? So seeing that, I believe in the Lord. My mind's already made up. The problem is, a lot of you Israelites, your mind isn't made up. And you need to hurry up and decide and choose this day whom you serve because you never know when the Lord is going to put your lights out. You never know when he's going to cut off that unpaid light bill. So instead of you playing and thinking everything's a joke, you Israelites really need to start getting serious out here, man. Okay, because while the light is here, you don't want it. But once the light is gone, you'll be looking for it when it's too late, which is stupid. I left my water in my truck. Second Ezra chapter seven. And I'm going to jump down to 56. For while we lived and committed iniquity, we considered not that we should begin to suffer for it after death. And that's going into reincarnation. Okay? If somebody comes into this world as a newborn baby and their body's deformed, they got a crooked neck, they ain't got no hands, they got two toes on both feet. Well, then it's probably something that they did in their past life. And they had to pay for it coming back. And people don't put that to heart. They don't ponder on that. For while we lived and committed iniquity, we considered not that we should begin to suffer for it after death. Then answered he me and said, This is the condition of the battle, which man that is born upon the earth shall fight, that if he be overcome, he shall suffer as thou hast said, but if he get the victory, he shall receive the thing that I say. Nevertheless, they believe not him, nor yet the prophets after him. No, nor me, which have spoken unto them. Let's go back to this read 59 again. 2nd Ezra 7 and 59 for this is life so what is life who is life first of all Yahweh Shai is life and that life is found within the word and this word is what our people are rejecting on a consistent rate all right for this is the life whereof Moses spake unto the people while he lived saying choose thee life that thou mayest live. So you have to choose life if you want to live. And how do you choose life? You choose life by choosing Yahweh Shai, which ultimately you're, you're, you're in a position where you think you're choosing. But really, he chooses us. For this is the life whereof Moses spake unto the people while he lived, saying, Choose thee life that thou mayest live. So you got to choose life so that you may live. But we understand, guess what? Most of you are not going to do that. You hate this word. 
You hate doing things the right way. Okay, let's go to John. This is the book of John. Chapter 1 and verse 4. And him, speaking of Yahweh Shai, was life. And the life was the light of men. So if you don't choose Yahweh Shai, you're not choosing life. You're choosing death. Okay? And when Yahweh Shai washed the feet of his disciples, well, guess what? He is that light unto our feet. He is that light that guides our path. He is that water that gives us a clean foundation. Okay? He is the way, the truth, and the life. And the light. In him was life, and the life was the light of men. So Yahweh Shai is the life, and he's the light. And a lot of our people, they're rejecting him. Which means what? They're choosing death. Which ultimately means they're going to um, reap what they sow. You reap death, you're going to receive death. Let's go back to John 14. I read this earlier. Let's read it again. John chapter 14 and verse 6. Yahweh Shai said unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. So Yahweh Shai is the way, the truth, and the life. So if you don't choose life, that basically means you're denying Yahweh Shai. And if you're denying Yahweh Shai, you better believe the Heavenly Father is denying you. You better believe you're condemned already. Okay? Let me find this scripture. This is the book of Baruch. Chapter 1 and verse 17. For we have sinned before the Lord and disobeyed him and have not hearkened unto the voice of the Lord our power to walk in his commandments that he gave us openly. So our people have always been rebellious. Our people have always rejected the light and the life. Verse 19. Since the day that the Lord brought our forefathers out of the land of Egypt unto this present day, we have been disobedient unto the Lord our power, and we have been negligent in not hearing his voice. So you people, you're going to pay for that. You wicked Israelites who are negligent, you don't want to um, hearken unto the voice of his prophets, because the prophets that you see, the prophets that you see coming out here doing this, we are the mouthpiece of the Lord, okay? Now, you can reject us, you can hate us, you can speak behind our back, but you can't take away that the Heavenly Father, Yahweh, and His only begotten Son, Yahweh Shai, has definitely sent us here in these last days. And that's why people are seeing us as such a spectacle, because the Lord would do this before He would return, which is the same thing that the prophets did in the old world. And here in 2024, people can't perceive with their eyes what I'm doing because they're in darkness. They're blinded, okay? So, let's go to Sirach, also known as the book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 2, in verse 15. They that fear the Lord will not disobey his word, and they that love him will keep his ways. So we understand, yes, the majority of you Israelites, you're disobedient, and wrath is going to come upon you. But we fear those of us who believe. And it's through the fear of the Lord that keeps us from sin. It's through the fear of the Lord that keeps us in line like skating. Okay? It keeps us on point like a number two pencil. Alright? It keeps us on top of our game like a bald eagle. They that fear the Lord will not disobey his word. It's about obedience, man. The Lord owns everything. Be obedient to him. That's what he's asking us for. If you live with your father and you tell your father one day, hey, dad, I want you to have this kitchen just to show you I'm thankful. And he looks at you and says, nigga, it's my kitchen. 
The only thing I want you to do is do them chores when I ask you. Get that trash taken out. Do this, do that. I want obedience. Well, the Heavenly Father, he wants obedience, man, because he owns everything. You can't give somebody something who literally owns everything. That's, that's stupid, okay? The best that we can do is to remain obedient. They that fear the Lord will not disobey his word, and they that love him will keep his ways. Let's go to Proverbs. If you love the Lord, you're going to listen. You're going to keep his ways. Proverbs 8 and 36. But he that sinneth against me wrongeth his own soul. All they that hate me love death. So if you are disobedient to the Heavenly Father, that means you love death. But if you obey the Bible, what the scriptures are telling you to do in righteousness, that makes you a child of light. That makes you illuminated. Okay? That means... At the end of the day, regardless of what people have to say about you, you could be one of those who are going to be delivered up out of here when destruction comes through your obedience. But to those who hate the Heavenly Father and disobey, they're going to receive wrath and not mercy. Okay? Because you reap what you sow. But he that sinneth against me wrongeth his own soul. And they that hate me love death. And you show that you hate the Lord by not being obedient, okay? You can say you love the Lord with lip service all day long. The Lord is looking for obedience, man, okay? Let's stay in Proverbs chapter 18 and verse 21. Death and life are in the power of the tongue. And you listen to these people, hear what they talk about, they don't have nothing important. It's all folly. It's all wickedness. It's all death, man. Okay? Death and life are in the power of the tongue. And me and my brethren, who are in the spirit of Yahweh Shai, our tongue is speaking truth. The majority of you people, you're flooded with lies, man. Death and life are in the power of the tongue. And they that love it shall eat the fruit thereof. So if you love life, you're going to eat the fruit of life. If you love death, you're going to receive just that as well, man. Let's go to Deuteronomy. Chapter 30. In verse 18, I denounce unto you this day that ye shall surely perish and that ye shall not prolong your days upon the land, whether thou passest over Jordan to go possess it. I call heaven and earth to record this day against you, that I have set before you life and death, blessing and cursing. Therefore choose life, that both thou and thy seed may live. So what's the problem? If you have the opportunity to choose life, why wouldn't you choose life? Because you Israelites are rebellious, man. That's why you don't choose life. You Israelites don't want to get it together. Okay? I call heaven and earth to record this day against you. So the Lord, look, he already knows what's going on. Okay? That I have set before you life and death. So death is what? All these false doctrines. But life, that's what I come out here and I present. But a lot of people, they're not going to choose life. They're going to choose the wrong path. They're going to choose that broad path, which is the way of destruction. Hey, how you doing, bro? What's happening? Good bro? to see you, man. All right. <laughs> how you been? Good. Shalom, shalom. You got you got any words of encouragement? Oh, yes, sir. Any wise words of wisdom? Well, well, right now I've been going into the topic of life and death life. and how most people are going to choose death and how when you're presented with the words of the Heavenly Father and truth, you're illuminated. Right. And a lot of people they're not really interested in that because they're in darkness. So basically, when they see men speaking this word, they're literally walking past the light and they're going right back in the darkness like it's not even here. Right. So basically, that's what I'm speaking on. I was just about to close up, in fact. Oh, yeah. You know? I got some words, if you don't mind. Hey, go ahead. I'm, go ahead. Yeah, I'm your code, Manel Shabak Yahweh. So my whole thing is that people don't want to follow the laws. The laws is what's going to save you. They want to follow the world. So they're choosing life and death, but they're choosing death. Life now in this world, 
but they're choosing death in the next one. People want to go by what man say. They want to follow his laws. They want to follow politicians, especially our people. They want to follow corporations. They want to follow the, the school system, the miseducation system. They want to learn all of these things, men with men, women with women, and they call good evil and evil good. That's right. And that's why they're going to receive death because of it. Now, I will say this. We're not saved by the law in terms of we can't keep the law 100%. In fact, we're breathing polluted air right now. Typically, we're polluting our temple just breathing. We have all mixed fabrics. A lot of our wives, when we got with them, they weren't virgins. You know, there's a lot of homosexuals running around. We're not putting them to death, right? You have men who have wives who have committed adultery on them. They didn't put her to death. So we're not saved by the law, but we do try to keep the law to the best of our ability. Right. Exactly. Because when you go into the book of Judges, chapter 5 and 11, it says we are to rehearse the righteous acts of the Lord. And I'm going to read this. And uh, I'm, I'm hearing you, brother. Th this is this is Romans chapter 7 and verse 6. But now we are delivered from the law that being dead, wherein we were held, that we should serve in newness of spirit and not in the oldness of the letter. So overall, we're going to be saved through faith in the Messiah. Now, he believes the Heavenly Father's name is Yahweh. I believe the name is Yahweh. Okay, and at the end of the day, in, in the kingdom of heaven, we're all going to be under one unison. Right. You have a lot of, you know, Israelites with different beliefs. You know, I don't I don't hate this brother in a sense of wanting to put a sword to him because this brother knows that he's an Israelite. He's not a scoffer and a scorner. There's a lot of men who claim to be brothers knowing that we're Israelites. And the first thing they want to do is shun you and, and be disrespectful. And, and kind of like disregard you and not, not try to hear where you're coming from. Oh, if you go to Psalm 68, 4, it says, I said, by his name, Yah. What's the common denominator in Yahuwah, Yahweh, Ahishah, Ahiah, and Yahweh? It is the prefix and the root word of Yah. So all of these names together makes up the name of the Most High. Yahweh, Yahuwah, Yahweh, they all have a common denominator and root word, and that's Yah. So even, all even, even in the, the name religion. Yahweh, when you take the Y, H, W, and the H, you could just pronounce those letters alone and get Yahweh. Because with the with the Y, you get the Ya, right? Then you got the H, huh, and then you got the W, and then you got the H. Huh. That's Yahweh. Y, H, W, H. So what we understand, though, although we have our differences, we're at the end of the world. You know, we're coming into a point where a lot of you Israelites, you're going to be judged because you're constantly putting off this message. Knowing that you're an Israelite, a lot of you don't even want to accept that much. You know, we're getting to a point where the Lord is getting, you know, he's just going to start cutting lights out. <laughs> you believe in the law and you know who, uh, that you're an Israelite and you love the Most High, I can work with you. I have nothing against you. We have all these differences. Even in the kingdom, there's 12 on one side and 12 on the other side in judgment. They're not even at all in agreement. So we can have our small disagreement and still love one another. But... This is a, a Sirach, also known as the book of Ecclesiasticus, chapter 5 and 7. Make no tarrying to turn to the Lord and put not off from day to day. For suddenly shall the wrath of the Lord come forth and in thy security thou shalt be destroyed and perish in the day of vengeance. So you Israelites, what do you do? You tarry. You see men like myself. You've heard this word and you'll either shun it. Or you'll put it off for another day and say, I believe it, but I got to get to this money. I got to get to the bag. I got to go chase these women. I got to do this. I got to do that. You know, you might you might have a family, whether right? you have stepkids or your own biological kids. You're putting the world first, but you're having all these distractions get in the way of the Heavenly Father. And he's a jealous power. But now we're in the point where seeing that he's a power that hides himself, he's not going to keep hiding himself. And that's why judgments are increasing in the earth. That's why we're in World War III right now, because it's biblical prophecy, man. Men have been talking about these things for a very long time, and people have just drove by, they have said ill things, and now that we're actually in the season, because according to Ecclesiastes 3 and 1, there's a, there's a time and a season for everything under the heaven. And now we're in a time and season where the Lord is fit to work. He's fixing to bring judgment. And those of you uh, Israelites who are not in the light, if you disregard the light, you're going to be left in darkness. And guess what? The day of the Lord is going to be a time of darkness, a time of great darkness. 
and you reap what you sow. Am I right? So seeing that, seeing that you wicked Israelites reap what you sow, since you like darkness, the Lord is going to bring darkness. And then what you gonna say? And then when Amos 8 and 11 comes to pass, matter of fact, let me just grab that. Because people just think they have all day, man. They think um, I'm gonna just keep coming out here for 35 years and then one day just die and go to the grave. Witness to them. So at judgment, they cannot say they did not know. That's right. It's impossible for you to have any ideal of social media, mainstream media, and not see the Hebrew Israelites preaching and telling them that they're Israelites. So there's no excuse in the last day at all. There's no excuse at all, man. And see, that's where we are in this time. All right? This is the book of Romans, chapter 8 and verse 33. Who shall lay anything to the charge of God's elect? It is the power that justifieth. Who is he that condemneth? It is Mashiach that died. Yea, rather, that is risen again. Who is even at the right hand of the power? Who also maketh intercession for us? Who shall separate us from the love of Mashiach? So tribulation or distress or persecution? Because we go through persecution all the time, right? Now, let me hold that. Let me get the point I want to go to. This is the book of Romans. Oh, where is it at? Oh, it's in the book of Amos. I'm tripping. My mind's racing right now. So let's go to the book of Amos. Chapter 8. Because we go through all these different persecutions, but these things are not going to separate us from the Lord. But we're going to be separated from you guys because the Lord's going to remove us. So this is Amos chapter 8 and verse 11. Behold, the days come, saith the Lord power, that I will send a famine in the land, not a famine of bread nor a thirst for water, although that's coming too, okay? But of hearing the words of the Lord. So they're going to try to shut down the internet. They're going to do everything in their power to prevent this word from going any further. You see that we're almost in an economic collapse and seeing that we're in a season of warfare and all these uh, world leaders are talking about warfare, it's because of the Lord's message going out. And his message is not going out void, okay? Because according to Isaiah 55 and verse 10, I can grab that because see, it's all about what the Lord has to say. And a lot of you camps out there, not throwing shade, but some of you brothers, you rant too much and you're not, you're not allowing the scriptures to speak. When these people are facing the throne of the heavenly father, the heavenly father needs to let them know, hey, my servant read my words to you. What is your excuse? Oh, well, he didn't read your words. That's not what the Lord going to say when it comes to his servants. Oh, they read my words. That guy was rambling. That guy didn't read the Bible. So he might look at you and say, OK, you still going to be judged, but you might have a lesser punishment compared to someone who's reading these words to you and you still shun it. OK, because we're bringing it out. All right. I forgot where I was about to go to. I was speaking on something, going into the famine of the word, seeing that we're in that season. Uh, Isaiah 55, okay. Isaiah chapter 55 and verse 10. For as the rain cometh down and the snow from heaven and returneth not thither, but watereth the earth and maketh it bring forth in bud and may give seed to the sower and bread to the eater because this bread or this word is likened unto water. And we're watering the children or the seed of Jacob. And if they have the seed of faith, they're going to grow thereby. Now, verse 11. So shall my word be that goeth forth out of my mouth. What is the Lord's mouth? Is he going to talk to you personally? The mouth of his prophets, man, whether you believe it or not. You could tell his prophets because when they say something, it's going to come to pass. And not only that, they're speaking according to 1 Peter 4 and 11, using the oracles of the Most High. If you notice, I'm not out here speaking my imagination. I'm not saying, well, I think or I feel. I'm, I'm reading you the scriptures because a lot of you behind the camera, you got a lot to say, but you don't have no scriptures to back up your opinions. Okay? So shall my word be that goeth forth out of my mouth. It shall not return unto me void, but it shall accomplish that which I please, and it shall prosper in the thing whereto I sent it. All these people drive by. But this word is not going out void. And that's the beautiful thing of the Heavenly Father. Because he's the spirit behind the word. If none of these people believe me, 
the Heavenly Father is still going to allow his prophecies to come to pass because it's this word that's affecting this earth. And all these people, he made them. And whether they admit it, whether they show it or not, they are being affected. All right. So at the end of the day, you Israelites are coming to a point where the time of repentance or the doors of repentance is going to be closed unto you. The day draws nigh, man. The time of judgment is at hand. So I'm probably going to go on ahead and uh, unless you got something to say, brother, oh. go on ahead and wrap it up. Yes, sir. I want to say this. At the end of the day, there's only one that can save us, and that's the most high God of Israel. Man can't save us. Leaders can't save us. No one can save you unless you first understand who you are, do the best of your abilities to follow the law, put your trust in him. That's the only thing that's going to help you in these last days. That's why we're going through what we're going through as a people. And we're still under Deuteronomy, the curses, because we have not come out of the curses by going back to who we are and who we worship and who our God is. So it's pretty simple. It's pretty simple. And we have to do that to save not only us, but our children. But that's all I want to say. Shalom. Hallelujah. Okay. And he said um, the only way that we're going to be saved is through who? The Most High God of Israel. The Most High. And this is another part where we differ. Now, I believe we're going to be saved through the Most High, but we're not worthy to be direct with him right now. We have to go through Yahweh Shai, just like if I'm the owner of a club, and let's say I'm the father and I own this business, and this business happens to be a club, and I give direction to my son that you don't let nobody in this club unless they go through you. If you give him the okay, then cool. That doesn't mean he has dominion over his father. His father gave him the order to be the median. They go through you. Why? Because he's the boss. And if the boss says this and he says that, that's what it is. Because when Peter, James, and John went to the top of the mountain, what was said by the heavenly father? This is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. Okay? Because it's through him that we're going to be saved. It's not going to be just through the Heavenly Father dealing with us because if that's the case, we don't have a chance. He's not dealing with us on that level. We are sinners. He turned his back on us. That's the whole reason why he sent his son, Yahweh Shai, to bring that, uh, to be that perfect blemish or that perfect lamb without blemish for the children of Israel. Okay? Because we constantly have went off. We constantly have gone off and the Heavenly Father typically... The reason why Yahweh Shai is called his only begotten son is because that is the Heavenly Father's only creation. He created everything else through the Messiah. And the scriptures tell you that. You can go to the book of Colossians. You can go to the book of Hebrews. You can go to the book of John. Okay, in other areas as well, where the Heavenly Father has gave Yahweh Shai his credentials. Yahweh Shai wasn't some made up entity that just popped up. He's in the Old Testament. Even King David prophesied in the spirit of the Messiah when he said he was going to be pierced through his hands and feet. King David was never pierced through his hands and feet. And Yahweh Shai said he came in the volume of the book. So what I understand is I'm going to be saved through Yahweh Shai. Now he believes he's going to be saved through the Heavenly Father. That's fine. But the beautiful thing of it all, we're all going to find out where we stand with the Lord at the end of the day. He's going he gonna to believe what he believes and that's totally fine. I'm going to believe what I believe, and I'm going to stand on what I believe, okay? And that's just what it is. So at the end of the day, man, uh, we got to make sure that we're on point and we're brotherly as, as much as possible, especially to those who believe the same thing as you. Now, when it comes to Israelites who may not believe in the same thing, you still got to be brotherly. We shouldn't be willing to, you know, pull out swords, you know, put each other to death. Like at the end of the day, if we have disagreements, cool, we move on. You know, you stand where you stand. I stand where I stand. Because one thing about the Lord, he has you stubborn. Whether you're stubborn for wickedness or you stubborn for righteousness, you're going to stand where you stand. And we ain't going to be able to do nothing about that. And the last thing on that, we have too many enemies to be divided. So I'm going to You take it easy, man. You have a good one. So I'm going to go on ahead and uh, probably wrap it up there. I hope and pray that this lesson, it was simple. And edifying, in fact, let me see if I could bring out one more scripture. And then um, I'll go on ahead and close it out. So this is the book of John, chapter 5, and verse 21. 
For as the father raised up the dead and quickened them, even so the son quicketh whom he will. For the father judgeth no man, but hath committed all judgment unto the son. So all authority has been given to Yahweh Shai. He believes he's going to be saved through the heavenly father alone. That's fine. I don't believe that. I believe the heavenly father is going to save us through his only begotten son, Yahweh Shai, who he has given all authority and judgment to. So I'm going to go ahead and wrap it up and give all praises unto our power, the power of Israel, not the power of any other nation. And what is his name? Yahweh, Bahashem Yahweh Shai, Bahashem Wabra Until next time, Lord willing, I'm out. Shalom.